All right, we've got one more guest here before we wrap up. Earlier described to us, come on, Jason. Earlier described to us as a beacher, uh, beacher surfer. Sorry, surfer dude. <laughs> hey, surfer dude, frozen. Doing, I'm frozen. <laughs> Your hands are warm. Will we, will we make people uncomfortable if we hold hands the whole time? <laughs> yeah, you'll make me uncomfortable. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Jason is uh, one of our friends here again from the uh, the, the annual Right to Life uh, effort here yeah. and uh, March for Life effort, and we. Uh, uh, met in the hallway yesterday and said, hey, we're releasing a movie on Friday. Yeah, so we're not, it's not a movie to movement movie, but movie to movement, I found it after our movie Bella yeah. to help produce and promote films that promote a culture of life, love, and beauty. So last year we came out with Crescendo, which was a movie that we produced with Justin Bieber's mom, Patty Millette. Yep. And, but there's a film coming out that's not my movie, so you can trust me when I say it's more powerful than Bella. This film, it's called Give, it's called Gimme Shelter. Yeah. It stars Vanessa Hudgens, yeah. Rosario Dawson, Brendan Fraser, James Earl Jones. It's about a young woman. She um, raised, raised in foster care, suffers abuse, and runs away to her mother who has drug problems. Tries to find her father she never knew who's Brendan Fraser. She has a secret. The secret is she's pregnant, and her dad takes her to get an abortion. She doesn't do it goes to a pregnancy center, and the real hero of this film is the pregnancy center workers and the other girls there. So not only does this film celebrate the dignity of the young, uh, the child in the womb, but it lets young women know, all these Vanessa Hudgens fans know, where they go if they get into a situation like this. Yeah. It's, a, it's absolutely amazing, and I don't know how this film came out of Hollywood. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, since you say Brendan Fraser, I'm like, really, Brendan Fraser's in a film like that? Is yeah. he a pro-life guy? I don't know. You know they. I don't know if they're pro-life or not. You know, they're actors, and I think they, they want a part. And it's a powerful, entertaining, moving film. Mm -hmm. And I think they read the script, were so moved by it. And the reviews have been incredible. Where do people go to find out about it? So, Is there a go look at the trailer? Yeah, if you, you go to uh, gimmeshelteredmovie.com, or you go to Fandango. It's gonna no, you, be know, you know this. Repeat this a couple of times. Okay. You know this now. Gimme Shelter, movie, the movie.com, or you just go to Fandango or your favorite movie site, put in Gimme Shelter, your zip code, and it will tell you your theater. We're going to be in 500 theaters. That's, that's a pretty sizable opening for a movie like this. Bigger than Bella and October Baby combined. I was going to say, when you, uh, when you look at something like, uh, you know, what, like The Hobbit or something, it opens on like 3,500 yes. screens. I mean, you're starting to get into a percentage of that. That's, that's pretty notable. Yeah, no, and if we have a big opening weekend, and that's why it's so important that everyone watching does this. Mm -hmm. If we have a big opening weekend, that's why Movie to Movement exists. That's to this help, weekend, folks. This weekend. If, Movie to Movement exists to help have big opening weekends. And if we have a big opening weekend, we can go to 1,000 or 2,000 theaters, which will make this the biggest media pro-life impact ever. And uh, with stars like Vanessa Hudgens, yeah, who has a very devout Catholic mom, who's mm -hmm. always praying novenas. Yeah. And, um, and I really do think it's Eduardo Verastegui, the star of Bella, always says there's nothing more powerful than the prayers of a mother. And I kind of well, see I, I can, this. I can testify to that. Right? <laughs> and uh, well, I'm praying that my mom becomes Catholic, so please pray for me. And then she can pray for me, because I need those. But um, I sometimes think this film is the fruit of of her mother's prayers yeah. because it's something that she's going to be proud of for the rest of her life. Do you think there's a, uh, you know, we hear this all the time, you know, all the, you know, the country's becoming more pro-life and, you know, well, it may be, but here in this town, this town isn't any more pro-life than, than it ever wasn't. Uh, but do you think that's true out sort of out, and, out across the land? In the entertainment industry and in my business in Los Angeles, I find overwhelming sympathy and support from people who are not conservatives, who are not Catholics, who are not Christians. I may not agree with me on anything else, but they're pro-life. And they're not pro-life, unfortunately, from, I've been in the pro-life movement for 23 years. Yeah. Not because of the work that we've been doing, but because of the work Planned Parenthood's been doing. Yeah. They've suffered from an abortion yeah. or abortions. They know the sadness, the despair, the loneliness, the alienation, and all the problems that have come from their abortion. Yeah. So they're, um, you know, they're not pro-life, maybe even for religious reasons, but because they don't want anyone to suffer like they're suffering. Yeah, yeah, just sort of on a human, natural, a human, human level. They're like, level. this is bad. It's, it was horrible for me, and I would not want any. And if you think of the movies, Bella, Waitress, Juno, Knocked Up, August Rush, um, music from uh, Kid Rock's Abortion to Nicki Minaj's Autobiography to Kenny Rogers' 
uh, Water and Bridges, yeah. where they sing about their regret from an abortion. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it is unfortunate that you think, well, you know, after it took 60 million abortions to kind of start, you know, moving the needle, but. You know, I mean, well, be that as it may, you know, the needle is moving. Well, yeah, our Holy Father, Pope John Paul the Great, wrote In Memory and Identity. It was really a collection, of, I think, of his interviews, his last interviews. His very last book, yeah. His very last book. He said, ideologies of evil have the seeds of their destruction within them. Absolutely. They're limited. Yeah. They're limited. Evil is limited. And the culture of death is limited. And this March for Life, I've never been more inspired. And I see the end. I was at the Students for Life rally and I was on stage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, we were there. <laughs> and, and I looked out and, you know, since my experience as a young teenager with an abortion, I felt a personal responsibility to end abortion. It's driven me. It's been a burden for, for, for 23 years. But when I was on that stage and I looked out, for the first time I felt like it's not my burden. It's, it's their burden and they're carrying it and they're going to end abortion. Uh, so, I'm, you know, we have that to look forward to. Yeah, it is a... Uh a lot of work to be done, but, you know, some things have been accomplished already. So uh, I think it's uh, important when you look out and you see some of these things advancing politically on the political front, on the, you know, the state level. You know, of course, you had the, uh, you know, the, the victory uh, in Texas. Uh, when was that? June, July. Um, but, you know, I, I think what some people have to realize, you know, the diabolical never rests in this. It never rests, even if it takes a, you know, suffers a setback here, or blowback there, comes back with like twice as much aggression, twice as much force. Oh, and if we end abortion, and I say uh, full legal protection for the human person is the first milestone toward a culture of life. Sure. It's not the end objective. Right. And the one thing we've been lacking as a movement, and we're the largest movement in the history of the world, yeah. the pro-life movement in the United States. But as a special interest group that seeks to achieve its policy objectives, we're horrible. There's yeah. never been a more impotent movement. Yeah. But I think we're going to start to figure that out. Mm -hmm. And um, if we can get this issue right on contraception, if that can be the thing, and that and that really is a that's a mess inside the pro-life movement. I think you know, I just got to you know the national right to life uh, you know organization won't touch it because right. you're you know you're trying to you know use you're trying to reach out to all of these different religions. Uh, you know, you've got Catholicism and, uh, you know, various Protestant groups, practically all of which either officially accept or at least neutral towards contraception. And that's a problem. Yeah, and I mean, you, this all needs to be galvanized. So the theological argument and debate has to happen. Yeah, I'm glad there are groups out there doing that. But what I'm excited about is, as a Catholic, I started out as a pro-life atheist. I was an atheist until I was 30. This is one of those guys, by the way, walking down the, the street there, you know, atheists for life. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't do that. I was, I was an Ayn Rand objectivist. <laughs> but I, but you know what I would do, which was absurd, is I'd look at all the Christians and I'd think, they would just get out of the way and let me, you know, communicate for the movement as an atheist and not scare people away. Um, we'd win. And I thought, well, who's we? <laughs> like, there's no we. There's like, and, and then I came to understand actually how I became a Catholic was reading Sartre and Nietzsche yeah. that obliterated for me any hope for human dignity without God. Right. And so, yeah, it's the Christian anthropology, which is the only source for our understanding for the special dignity for the human person. But I do think through natural law, there are other groups that a train goes through the tunnel and will come back the same way it went, went through. So, um, it's this fear of families. I was with the Duggars today, yeah. and they're such a beautiful family. Yeah. And to think people are, I have seven children, and people go, oh, that must be horrible. I'm like, it's the most joyful thing in the world. Like, I walk down the stairs. So they all want to wake up at five in the morning. Yeah, I, I love waking up with a foot in my face, right? And a kink in my back because four kids have climbed in the bed. Or, yeah. If I have a late night at work and I come downstairs last, I see my wife homeschooling my children on the couch and praying together. What more could anybody yeah, say, what, what else do you want? What more is there? So this is what we need to show people, the joy of, a, of, of large families. And, um, and I, you know, I know Social Security won't be around, so I'm knitting together my own safety <laughs> net, my own trust fund. Yeah, I remember back in the day when Roosevelt launched uh, you know, his uh, supposed New Deal, uh, you know, you had, what, 32, I think, payers 
into the system for every one so drawing out. So I have out. to have a few more kids. So you kids. got about, what, 20 some more kids um, to have, and then you'll have your own little social security uh, system. I'm looking forward to it. My mother-in-law <laughs> lives with us. And I live in Hawaii, which is a very communitarian society. Yeah, yeah. Here, here, but folks, this has been a cross for him out there in that like minus 10 or whatever it was today. That was awful. It was experience. <laughs> it wasn't I've, Hawaii. I've been in the March for Life 20 times, but this was shockingly cold. Yeah, I, I'm not sure which was worse last year or this year. Last year know. was just bitter, but this was... This year to me, maybe because I was on the mainland more, we call yeah. it in the mainland, but, yeah. but uh, I came straight from Hawaii after 10 weeks here, and it was shocking, and then I'm going to Minneapolis on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get on the plane to get back to Hawaii. Get back to Hawaii. Uh, I need to do that. <laughs> Jason, thank you very God much. God bless you Tell for everybody your one more time where they can go to find out about the movie. Uh, go to movietomovement.com, or you can go to gimmeshelterthemovie.com. Or search your favorite uh, movie ticket site, and buy tickets, bring friends. If we make Give Me Shelter the biggest movie in America, this weekend it is the greatest opportunity we have had to change culture since Roe vs. Wade on this issue. Get to evangelize, get to help save the culture, and you get to have some popcorn with salt and some junk food. I mean, can't get any easier than that. I can't walk into a movie theater without getting popcorn. Yeah, absolutely. No. Jason, thank you very God much. And welcome you. home to the faith, too. Thank you very much. All right, God bless. Thanks, God bless. Jason. All right, we're going to wrap up our show here and uh, say that's it for the... Uh, that's it for our coverage from the 2014 March for Life here in Washington, D.C. We've been coming to you from the folks here at the uh, Capitol High. It's been nice enough to let us use this room. Uh, and we had dinner, as you can see, the big mess around us. We came very close, and we just had to jump into the show. So excuse the mess, but feel like you're coming to us. Uh, we're coming to you from our living room or our kitchen. So uh, we will see you next week on Miked Up Live from the studio back in Ferndale in the lovely Archdiocese of Detroit. Hello, Archdiocese of Detroit. And uh, we will continue uh, bringing you the truth and the faith and, uh, and helping you to become better Catholics. And if you're not a Catholic, you need to become a Catholic. God love you from the 2014 March for Life here in Washington, D.C.